Kraken has arrived, and with it, three new vaults. Well, because one of them is Cake Vaults, yes, that uh, was already in the game, but it's different enough that I think it warrants a bit of an explanation as it is almost a new type of vault. But Cake is not where we're gonna start, we're gonna start with the braziers. And the name of the objective, to be more specific, is like the braziers, and it's here to get rid of Monolith. So, first off, there is a seal now for it, and the seal is the seal of the scout. That is part of the quest of sealing your crystals that before was a elixir vault, but now it's the braziers. And how do you craft it? Like this with a campfire. But let's go inside so that I can tell you how it works. Inside of every room, you're gonna find a brazier. And every brazier is gonna have one positive modifier and one negative that you can choose to either light up, like this, or ignore and go try to find new ones, so that you can find whichever modifiers you want to have for the rest of your vault. But what happens when you consume your last one? Well, much like monoliths, you need to exit from where you entered, aka the portal. So you can still light more braziers, unlike monoliths that after you get all of them, you can do nothing with them bar looting, but now you can still go and find more braziers. But there is something different, as you can see. Right now, there is only negative modifiers, and that is because I already lit up enough braziers to get the objective completed. And now, instead of giving me a positive modifier like before in exchange for a negative one, you can take a negative one for extra loot, for example, lemons, gear, or other good stuff. And yeah, it can be something rather like lesser or something really good. So it's a mix of, okay, is the bed bad enough that I don't want to click on it? Or do I want it even if it's just going to take me one art away? And yeah, this one is very good to take, for example. So you're going to have to juggle what positive modifiers do you want before you complete the objective and which negative modifiers you do not mind for getting good loot. And the crit you get for completing the objective of the braziers, well, it's the same loot table as the monolith crate. And now it's time for the vault cakes. And those are a bit different to obtain the seal of the confessioner, because that is no longer a crafting recipe, so you need to find them inside of bounty tables or the black market. Or also, I think they should be also getting in the completion crates, but don't quote me on that. But once you have the crystal with the seal applied, you go inside, and what exactly is the difference inside? First off, once you click the cake, instead of all the four modifiers that you could get before, you get a cake layer. And the cake layer increases basically everything in the vault, be it mob damage, speed, soul charge, chests, everything, both good and bad. And much like the braziers, cake pedestals now can be found in every room also, so you don't need to worry about trying to get one to exit, you just need to worry yourself about finding as many cake layers as possible and looting as much as possible. As you can see, now I'm at 20 layers and the amount of chests is certainly increasing. And now the more layers you have, the higher amount of loot you're gonna have inside of your crate, or if you want to call it like that, or cake crate. I have 20, so I'm gonna right click it and complete the vault. And with the 20 layers, I got this crate that contains about half of the loot that previously one of these would have. Because now, to have the amount of items that was previously inside of this, you need to get 40 layers. And for the last new vault, we have Stove Flame, that is crafted like this, and can be applied to a crystal that is at least level 65. And once you over over, it says which player this Stove Flame belongs to, and the number of stacks. And you can get those stacks to increase by completing the vault. These vaults are called Ascension Vault, and they can either be Elixirs, as you can see, this one is one, or Scavenger Vaults. And depending on how you exit the vault, if you get defeated or bail, you get a plaque, and depending on your score, also you'll get Embers, and if you survive, you're getting back your Soul Flame with a new stack added into it. In your plaque, you can just Place it down and it's gonna have your face and the number of stacks you had when you failed the vault. The embers, that is this 
item I have on my end right now, you're going to be able to use it to buy stuff at the Ascension Forge, which is going to be basically transmogs or titles that you can add to a prefix or suffix, depending on what you see over here, to your name. Some changes have also been made to the vaults, and for example, one of them is right here, in the message you receive when entering or exiting the vault. And for example, this one is a guardian, or the guardian's vault. So now, there is a message, entered uh, into the guardian's vault, instead of just saying enter the vault. So the objective of the vault is now appearing on the entering or exiting. Like for example, the other one I had, Valesef, was defeated in an elixir vault. So objectives now appear when entering or exiting the vault in the message in chat. Still looking at the chat, we also get a message saying which pylon did we take when we right click them. And there is also a new type of door. And those are the vendors. And instead of these vendors, what can you find? Shop pedestals that you can pay gold and get the item. So, this one in the site of the patch note said that it's to take over the vendor rooms. But I don't know if it is confirmed that those are not in the game because. I know for a fact that they are, but I don't know if you need to use Catalyst now to get them, or if they can still naturally spawn. And something to make these vendors a bit more appealing is that now you don't need to get a crafting table from maybe the wood that you have in this, or this crafting table over here, and come to convert everything into silver and then into gold. Nope, you just, you can come here, and if you have enough bronze and silver in your inventory, even if you don't have enough gold, and right click and it will auto convert the copper, the bronze and silver in your inventory into gold or platinum but uh, walks around with platinum anyway. And there has also been a change to champions and as you can see there is nothing as modifiers go for this champion because now the modifiers that appear can be either zero in case you are in piece of cake or easy always zero Normal, it can be either 0 or 1, and hard and above will always have one modifier only. And the other difference I cannot show you because it's in this tab over here, that is co-op, and now the order in which players appear in that tab is by the, by the most EXP to the less EXP. And the next change is with the gods, because before you needed to go back to the god altar after completing a quest or challenge as you want to call it and you need to right click if you were at higher level i cannot complete this outside of the vault oh no you need to go back and complete the challenge but now you don't you simply go in and claim your item that is a missing it's not skin missing texture because this was not supposed to be in the overworld but what you get is basically one of these a charm from the goddess in this case in this case the benevolent so it should be Valara. and what do you, can you do with this well you're going to an anvil and with a crystal you can use it into a crystal to add the favor that you normally get on completing an object into the next crystal that you go into I can't with this one because, well, because that one was gotten in creative and not exactly one real one. But not only that, inside of even still god related stuff, you can still take the crystal and take one of the charms that you don't intend on using because it has a low affinity and you can combine it and take those 37% into the crystal itself. So this crystal now, right now is 37 Thanos tiers, which each Thanos tier is 1% affinity. So this is a way to use those charms that you weren't planning on using, but still add around because you could not scrap them. And now let's talk about the inscriptions, because now you can craft empty inscriptions. And the reason for that is that this is no longer found inside of living chests and are only craftable. Despite what this over here says, because if I go inscription, it still says that there are some over here, but that's not the case. And as I said before, vendor rooms can still be crafted inside of the inscription table, despite the fact that the Vault Hunters patch note says that vendors are there to take the place of the vendor rooms, must be because they 
are simply more common. And the next change is in the sword and gear to be more specific. So let's take these both swords and over them. As you can see, this one has Illager damage and Anthropod damage. Meanwhile, this one now has Champion damage and Assassin damage. That is because these types of damages that do damage against one type of mob no longer exist and instead was changed to be a type of mod fro mob from Vault Hunters, not the specification of Minecraft mobs. And the next change is to tools, and to be more specific, into copiously and trap disarm. Because let's first go into copious, that is simpler. And before you could get copiously up to 100%, and it had the chance to double ores. But now you can go past that 100%, and if you go past them, instead you have the chance to triple the ores up until 300%. If uh, 200%, I mean. And I don't know if it is capped at that, because it simply said that 100% was no longer the cap. As for trap design chance, what was changed was not the trap design itself, but the modifier trap that was changed to clumsy. And instead of adding the chance of the chest being trapped, it reduces your trap design by 50%. And once your trap design reaches zero, from the base, 5% of trap chance that are in the chests it adds 50% of the uh, previous amount on top, meaning that after you get 0% of trap chance disarm, or trap disarm chance to be more specific, more correct, you then need another 8 modifiers of clumsy to reach 100% of trap chance. And now let's get over with the remaining changes because they don't have a unifying thing and are just some minor changes. And the first one is inside of expertises, and to be more specific, the Lucky Altar. Before you had a chance of having a lower costs Lucky Altar, but now there is a flat chance percentage of when you place the crystal it will be auto completed. The next one is inside the bounty table and that if you recall a quest, for example this one that I have submit 14 QEs, before it would somehow jump to the one that is active or completed then it was a mess. But now it will simply focus on the one that you are recalling, and you don't need to go and jump between one and the other every time you want to recall, you just need to press recall. And a new game rule has been added, that being the Vault No Research Team penalty, that I just turned to, try, to try it out, and it basically reduces or to zero the penalty of being an research team, meaning that you don't get to use more knowledge points to unlock the same mods. Instead, they are just the price that you have when you are in without a research team is the price that you're going to pay while you are on a research team, if that is turned to true. Also, a new block has been added, and that is the Animatrix that you can come and with a spawn egg, you can click on it and you're going to display the mod. And it is just an image, so it can't hurt you. So I have this wither over here and being in survival doesn't mean that will start shooting me or anything. Also, if you want to remove the egg from the animatrix, you just shift right click with an empty hand and you get the egg back. And the rotation is not tied to where you place the egg, but rather the direction when you place the animatrix. Still in the topic of shift and right clicking, if you shift right click into a coin pile that you placed, you can take away just one coin. And you can take those coins into the transmogrification table and play with all the new transmogs that have been added. So after that, let's go into the next part, which is I'm just going to read the balance patches and bug fixes that I don't feel should or need a longer explanation. So I'm just going to read them and run this up. Let me just read you the balance updates and bug fixes because they don't warrant a full on description about what they do. So let's start. Balance update. Slimes now scale their chance of spawning a poison cloud on death instead of always spawning it. The range is level based and goes from 20% at level 0 and 75% at level 100. Snow wolves now have a chance of collapsing into a shilling cloud on death. Elixir objectives have now a scaling step at level 90 and 100, increasing its difficulty. Emmers can no longer use the vein mana ability. Mana and mana percent on potions beyond the first level has been lowered in its amount. Not retroactively, legacy potions still function, 
which thank god they were too strong. Increases the general experience gained for killing mobs by 10%, added wool to 2 string, pulverizing 4 all wood colors. Increase the experience gained by killing mobs and significantly increase dungeon mob experience reward. Bug fixes. Fix clan crash with broken charm. Fix uh, play the energy sticks to auto crafting. Fix goal reputation resetting back to zero. Fix spirit extraction counting items doubled. Fix cake completion in screen. It now shows the correct amount of EXP. Fix fading setting players to 1 HP when using a giant heart. Charm will not kill the player anymore if a projectile from a charm mob hits them. Fix kick transmog not unlocking. Fix death door transmog not unlocking. Fix being able to join as a co-op in the build phase of a paradox vault. Fix architect quests not unlocked after catalyst quest. Fix absorption islands. Fix items from shop pedestals not stacking. Fix gilded chest dungeons and chaos loot pools not scaling beyond level 20. Fix a bug where champions with the leech effect didn't like leech. And that is all about it for a patch 13. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.